You guys know it had to be done. In today's match analysis, we're going to be running a two-man heli squad on Goose Bay Ras V3. I am going to be SLing. Um, Sniffles has created the squad, but I'm going to be taking over for him, and I'm going to be squad leading with a standard SL kit from the passenger seat of the helicopter, and he's going to be flying me around. I'm going to try to handle all the comms and do as much spotting as I possibly can over the duration of this match. Without uh, any further ado, I'm going to let the comms roll since I explain a lot of what I'm going to attempt to do in the staging phase itself. We will be abusing spotting mechanics this game and scouting out all the enemy fobs. If you absolutely need a supply, let me know and we'll break off, but we're going to prioritize that unless you guys yell at us too much. Justine, I gotta do all the work, so you're telling me. Sorry. So immediately the other pilot brings up a great point, which is the fact that we are neglecting other responsibilities to do this scouting. Whenever you have an idea for something that might be effective in squad, it's important to look at what you're taking away from the team as well as what you're adding to the team. If you want to run mortars, that's going to cost you a logi truck and a bunch of men. So are you going to do well enough to justify that? That's the question you should always be asking. And right now, we are doing a series of testing matches with this scouting thing to see, is it worth having a two-man helicopter dedicated to scouting for a majority of the game? Now, of course, we can and will, over the course of this match, do other things. Do quick resupplies or grab um, a few people for a ride if it is essential and the other helicopter isn't there to cover it. But it is important to realize that we are handicapping our team in some way. So let's see over the course of the match if our scouting is actually worthwhile. Now, this is not our first attempt. We have done two games prior to this, and both were bad for various reasons, but ultimately we haven't actually got a great scouting game in yet. And that is because, although it seems really simple, just fly to the service ceiling and look out over the terrain and spot things for your team, there were a couple of problems, um, namely being that I was just having a hard time doing it effectively without getting caught up in small details and sidetracked and doing other things on the map. I was really having a hard time just dedicating myself to scouting. So I'm talking to the pilot right now, I'm talking to Sniffles and saying, this is what we should try to do this match. Let's just hit that service ceiling as quick as we possibly can. Now the other problem that we were having is it was very inconsistent when we were spotting Habs, and up until this point I think I had a hunch that there might be a maximum render range for Habs from the air, but it was not confirmed and we were not entirely sure. We do learn that this is the case later on, and I'll talk about that later. Now in the staging phase, I wasn't sure if we were going to have a squad join us for a ride, so I told Sniffles if there's no squad hopping in with us, let's just hit that map border, or sorry, that height ceiling as quick as we possibly can and see where their helicopters go. But somebody does contact us in command chat and decide to get into the helicopter. So we are going to be doing a drop at the beginning of this match. We're going to take a look at squad lanes real quick because we are lucky and the current flag we have clarifies lane. So we know that this is going south lane and that's about to be brought up in command chat. Unfortunately for the enemy team, their first flag does not confirm their lane. So as far as they know, this could go anywhere right now. So we're fortunate in that we have an imbalanced... Um, RAS layer here, essentially, and we are going to have more information than the enemy team off of flag one. Now, this is something that's going to be interesting because I'm currently playing on TT, or Tactical Trigonometry. And I talked about this server in my last match analysis, but I'm continuously being impressed by it. Um, servers change all of the time, so if you're watching this video in the distant future, take everything I'm about to say with a grain of salt, but so far TT has been one of the best servers I've ever played on when it comes to the competence of the community. I've played on a billion servers that offer benefits to clans and get a lot of clans in and have a lot of experienced players playing, but I have never found a server where the core culture is as focused on just being good squad players. A lot of these guys genuinely will communicate and form complex plans on the fly in pub games and will execute them well. You actually get matches on TT that feel almost like scrims and that people can actively switch between trying to aggressively push flags or trying to go for tickets if things aren't going well. And you're going to see that come into play here. Because one of the very interesting things about my playstyle is that when I see a layer like this, I'm not looking at it that deep. Honestly, I'm just thinking, what's my pub game strat? I probably want to go for flag 3, maybe flag 4, but probably 3. This is a six flag, I'm just going to stick to my side. Um, and there's not a lot of other things for me to decide other than I might go for the back caps if people are already putting move marks in relevant uh, positions. I might um, encourage people to go south if they start putting move marks up north. Ultimately, I'm going to try to work with a standard blueberry horde. But one thing that's really interesting is in this game, you're going to see the other pilot take some initiative and he looks at this map as a whole 
and he sees, well, we have two helicopters and two infantry squads, and we can completely block them out on Flag 4 in both locations. And that's an excellent plan, and it's an excellent strategy, and it's something that I never even considered because I never stopped to think, wow, this entire team might be able to get behind a strategy like that. I rarely look at things with such an open mind. Uh, anyway, I'm kind of rambling, but it's just an interesting thing you're going to see during the staging phase as we decide where to go. I'm back. What up? What's the plan, boys? South lane. It's south lane. Yeah, where you had an affinity? Uh, yeah, fly me wherever. Is this how this works? It goes west? We'll take... I'll mark yeah, the we'll three flag wing. threes. Uh, I can't hear you, sorry. Okay. Yeah, for yeah, uh, we'll send, uh, back you to send the helis to the send the helis to the fourth points, right? We can okay. play it that way, we yeah. can do it either way. We'll dump mine on research center or whatever. If we do this, we'll lock down fourth points with helis, hopefully, and then everybody who's not in the heli just try to make sure we get these first three points, right? You got the red flags for those, you, those uh... three, the other two are right here. I like How it. How do you know it works this way? You're not in a heli, the first three points is your problem, right? Thank you. That's just us, though. I got it. Like, it, it may not work this way. I am they, I got they change no. yee -ho. Uh, it's up to date. Squad lanes is... The extraction was run again, and this isn't the new logic, so this should be 100%. They... If not, I claim responsibility. <laughs> So some of the Yeho Rasses, some of them have a new logic. You can tell on squad lanes because it's going to show a bunch of midpoints and it's not going to make a bunch of sense. You can still use squad lanes to rule things out, but the introductory thing doesn't really show you all the possibilities. But this one's just a standard lane base. Like, this one's just standard lanes. You can see by the way it's marked on squad lanes, so this should be standard logic. And it's all up to date. Second points on back. six diamonds, third sure. points on rally flag. I'm sure about this game. Alright, I'll just Me, uh, just following orders, man. West, baby. Don't West, throw me baby. in Nuremberg. Can we on the radio? Oh, oh disaster. Oh. Disaster is struck. Drop radio up here. <laughs> Well, we would scout. We're gonna resupply real quick, and then I'll let you know where their helis are going. We're a little bit late, but. Sweet. Yeah, if you can scout out where they're landing right now, that's great. And then I can just hover at max altitude over by our main and see the fobs if they have any down. So you're going to see this once we get to altitude, if you haven't been to high altitude in a helicopter before, but everything vanishes. This thick fog, all of the trees, all of the buildings, or at least most of the buildings, and you can pretty much see any deployable or any vehicle across the entire map from pretty much any point in the map. That's why we're immediately heading back to main instead of getting the close scouts on the helicopters like the other heli, which fortunately he's able to cover. Now the thing that I don't know at the time, but we have figured out over the course of this match and the next match, is that the Habs themselves do not render past 1500 meters. However, as mentioned, you can see all other deployables, including radios, repair stations, anything anyone places down can be seen at max range, except for the Hab. Now interestingly, this does kind of castrate this strat, in a sense, because if you look, Squad 2 is already scouting a ton of shit, and he doesn't even have the scout seat running. Just from looking outside the side window of a helicopter and doing lazy circles like he's kind of doing or kind of has been doing since he uh, dropped off that infantry squad, you can see a ton of stuff. Look at all of the marks he's already thrown down. 
the advantage of being back on the border with a high zoom optic like we have is what you're about to see now, which is the fact that it just becomes Play-Doh terrain in the distance, and you can see everything. It actually becomes quite challenging to find out where exactly things are because you have almost no landmarks for reference. In this case, we do have a big landmark in the form of airfield, and you're going to see us start to immediately spot vehicles. Now, Squad 2 has already spotted these, so they're already on the map, but I am confirming them and updating the marks slightly. Now, we're going to notice a theme over the course of this video of both it being a little bit more challenging to keep perfect situational awareness while running this squad than I would initially expect, and also it being not quite as effective as I would initially expect. But right here, you can see one huge advantage of what we're doing, which is simply the enemy vehicles have nowhere to hide. At any point in time, I can look around and find the enemy tanks, and that is a huge asset to our tanks. Now to give you an idea of what's going on in the match right now, a Lodgy has just entered one of their Flag 3s or our Flag 4s and gotten immediately wiped by one of the infantry squads there, and I'm also just letting my pilot know exactly when these trees start to render in. Um, and yes, I don't have stabilization on, I'll figure that out in a second, don't worry. Now I wish I understood the 1500 meter render thing right about now, because right now I'm looking over these vehicles and glossing over them and prioritizing trying to find HABs on early objectives for them, trying to find out where they're placing their HABs on the points leading up to here. In hindsight, I would have gone 100% into marking every little vehicle because I think that would have been the best option for me at this exact moment. Now fortunately I'm still able to see Lodges perfectly fine, so I see exactly where they go for their Flag 2. Right now I'm marking both possible enemy Flag 2s for the team so they know where to leapfrog after they get Flag 4. Our Flag 4, their Flag 3. Sorry, I should stop switching back and forth there. But ultimately I see a Lodgy and a Tiger over there, so I assume that that's going to be the next flag and I announce as much in command chat and that does end up being true. A little after this, and something that I'm going to skip, I also see a Lodgy heading on their south road to... Um, the south border essentially that sets up a small out of the way repair station fob that is going to have an impact on the match later on. Anyway, from this point on, this is going to look more like a highlight reel than a match analysis, but I'll have input for the clips that I find at this match to show. Let's try and do a that is three tigers and one lodge. Tigers are wolf packing. And they are all coming towards you in the armor. The Lodgy is going south into the city on one move. It's exactly on one move. Okay. Yeah, I'll drop one uh, app right here, guys. Give me a moment. I thought they had already built there. Enemy tank has left their main. It is currently traveling on the southmost road. Yeah, I'm really hoping to get a lodge. Hey, we can just. I believe I have eyes on BMP or possibly second tank marking. I I don't have one. Is the problem so. I'll just drop a few then. They have two tanks? Yeah. Um, I mean, if you could. Yeah, I can do a quick run to five wing. One, can you do a dump on five wing when you get a chance? We're gonna do a quick supply run to five wing. Last known mark on north tank is accurate. There's also a lodgy sitting on south border. I do not see any habs on head. But that could be me. I wonder if there's a finite rendering distance on enemy habs. Because back in that game, I was definitely seeing a bunch on our defense objective on the Yeho game. But we were close when I was seeing them. And then when I looked to the north ones, no that's not true, I saw one inside the objective. So I don't know what's up with the fact that I don't see any habs around head. I guess the enemy team truly might not have them, or they might be harder to spot on the white backdrop than I'm giving them credit for. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, I can see our hab. Well, the infantry leaving it. Not easy to see necessarily, but I can see it. Another benefit of being in a two-man heli squad is that you can drop fobs relatively easily solo. No, I do not ever really recommend doing this. They're almost always going to be shitty habs. 
But currently we're in a situation where we are losing flag four and we're going to have to defend flag three at least temporarily. And nobody's really in a position to get to it. Everybody's talking about it in command chat. So I'm going to volunteer just to swoop in and build a quick fob so we can get a quick defense on there. Obviously this is super risky and I don't recommend doing it unless there's no other option because it goes bad just as often as it goes well. And you're about to see it go bad. Spawn main, get the helo, drop factory. I can just drop a hab on factory. I have two people. I'll drop one far west so you can triple fob it. Okay. Let's uh, build a fob here real quick. Like I said, we just died. <laughs> Whoever's dead, get ready to spawn shift factory. I'll be a sec. The whole time I was rifleman. Because I promoted you and never, never switched back to the pilot. <laughs> nice. We were a uh, SL plus five. Oh no! no! All right, problem. I just died. No. They're, They're on there. factory. Oh. Yeah. Right okay. by nine uh, A. Cap is a light trap. Dan, can one of the lives meet me on fishing? West side of fishing. Yeah. The other one can't. The head. Okay. I'm gonna stay alive for a bit to give him doubts, but a call for a medic. <laughs> so yeah, that's not ideal. It might have been worth the extra time to grab a squad at main, but it all depends. We were faster than we would have been if we did that, but then we obviously weren't fast enough, so now we don't have the cover of at least an infantry squad. The silver lining is we never fully lost 5-wing though. We actually end up holding it neutral. So this little expedition will cost us 20 tickets for that radio, but nothing more. Now from here until the very end of the game we spend a ridiculous amount of time just trying to find these enemy habs because the team is spotting them. We have confirmed locations but we can't get eyes. Um, so we're basically at this point confirming the fact that you cannot spot them at range and in the next match which I will also show part of we actually confirm that exact range which is 1500 meters. But essentially at this point we just waste a lot of time until the very end of the game. Now, as I said, things start to get a little bit stalemate -y. We start to get into a situation where it's potentially going to be a game of tickets. And so because we spotted a repair station on the south border where that um, Logi truck went in the early game that you actually saw, we decide to try to communicate with the rest of the team and grab somebody's spare engineer to go take it out. This should at least offset the fact that we just lost a 20 ticket radio. Hey Dan, you want to have your engineer spawn main? I'll take him to that south radio to take it out. Free 20 tickets. Yeah, he's spawning main now, thank you. Sweet. Alright, we're getting one engineer to spawn main and hop in with us. We're gonna go kill that south radio. Is it? How's it going? I don't think so, it's pretty hard to push. Right yes sir, if you look at the south end of the map, that Logi mark is a repair station. Radio's probably in one of the south buildings. We're gonna drop you off by that, see if Copy. we can get a free 20 tickets. Sounds fun. When you get close, Sniffles give me a little elevation, I'll spawn for some big there, that's gonna be an issue. Well, there Heli's around. But, I don't think he sees us yet. Oh, yeah, there's a tank there. He's looking at us, get moving. Tank and BTR. We're just gonna hover for a sec until we see those Vicks go, and then I'll take you back. Yeah. I think seven diamond you areas are put down you enemy abs. Just along uh, the ride. I don't know if there's a help. If you want to pop for elevation, I can check. But I'm pretty sure it'll be gone by now. The question is, has somebody else come to join the fight? Join the reps? It is. And it's like all the way up here. So. Please. Radio might even be right on it, not even in one of the buildings. There's a marker for you. Copy. You want to try and drop right on it, or...? I'll just drop on the shore. When we're back in the air, I'll get you a more perfect mark with that radio range. It's just in vicinity right now. I'll get you an exact mark on it. Godspeed, brother. While that engineer is working on that radio, I go back to prioritizing spotting armor and capture this pretty awesome moment. Uh, squad 5, you have two enemy tanks approaching you. Turn around. Squad 5, turn around, turn around, turn around. Squad 5, you got a BMP coming to your east. Tank and BMP approaching you. Oh, no. 
So this is quite bad timing because this is becoming a ticket game and now we have a armor engagement here that doesn't look very promising for our tank and I believe we have a radio in danger somewhere on the map that the other SLs are talking about. So this is getting pretty nerve-wracking. At this point I should probably be prioritizing something else but I'm really enjoying watching this fight so this goes on for quite a while. We'll try to go dig it down. Yeah, you gotta check out the cinematic shit from time to time. Okay. Then, I warned him yeah, in the nick of time <laughs> and he turned around. I don't know if he turned around because of audio or because of me, but I'm going to take credit for it. <laughs> now he's fighting a BMP and a T-72. Oh, two T-72s. There are two tanks and BMP there, five. You should just bail. Nice save. Roger, thank you. One tank is pursuing you. As a side note, I should definitely be direct messaging him rather than saying this all over the net. Just something uh, to review in hindsight. Oh no, our AT just double- Oh, our AT just fucking double tapped the BMP. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. There are three armor kills on squad four. If anyone has spare AT, this is turning into a ticket game. Three big ticket armor kills on squad four. We're also getting that south radio, most likely. Combined, I'm looking at 60 tickets right now that we might be able to get okay. before game ends. This is amazing. The enemy heli is trying to rotor kill the infantry as the infantry nearly kills the BTR as two tanks fire at the infantry. Or VMP, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling the team to. Uh, chaos. I'm telling the team to send all of their AT there before the game ends. Cause it's 30 tickets to tanks, another 10 for the BMP. Plus, we're getting that south radio, I'm sure. Probably. Eventually. I was gonna say, there hasn't been any flag movement this game. Yeah, that's why I offered to take the uh, NG down south. He's getting away and he's the one who's been hit. I think the two tanks are fresh. So, oh, one got tracked by a tank. Are you guys running no P yet? That's, uh, oh, that's silly. No. Never mind, you could have been that guess. If we were going to there, we should have ran there in 20 minutes. Is hard limit. I just forget that the altimeter in these is a radar altimeter to the ground directly below you. Oh, yeah. Look at the two heavy ATs out there, but that's what I think. It's fine. Yeah, if you want, you could tell your hat kit that the west okay. tank is trapped I and damaged. I need a mission request on... Hey! Good job, guys. And that was way closer than I thought it was going to be. Shit. A little sloppy. A little sloppy. <laughs> A little bit, uh, but you know, we got there. Oh, too close. Oh, too close. That was the radio that I got. Hey, nice. Yeah. Good job. Don't judge us. So initially I wanted to show quite a bit of this second match, but unfortunately we didn't really have the team to back us. So although we got a lot better at our spotting, as you can see here, we didn't have a lot of situations where it really helped the team or the team was able to take advantage of it. So it wasn't the greatest match to showcase as a whole, but I do want to show you us spotting a radio, which was easily visible at an incredible range and then slowly moving into that 1500 meter limit uh, to where we actually saw the hap. This is Sniffles in the camera, he's SLing, he calls it out, and I'm flying in this particular clip. Now you can start to see how effective this is, because it is much easier to spot things on Yeho, it's much higher contrast, the map is a lot less dark than that particular Goose Bay layer, 
And we spotted that radio from way away, probably even 3,000 meters, and then moved in to find the hab, which is, by the way, indoors, and yet we still see it perfectly fine. Here, we're just moving back and forth to test that exact limit. Now, to be fair, this was harder than it looks. These clips make it look very easy, but we were actually both having trouble maintaining our situational awareness and prioritizing what we were doing. We found ourselves often getting caught up in things that didn't matter quite as much. And dedicated scouting like this isn't quite as easy as it looks in these clips, but it is incredibly powerful if you can do it right. And if we start gaining some more experience and start getting a little bit better at this and better at prioritizing things, this could be incredibly powerful. Imagine a scenario here where we don't give a ride to infantry and we just take off straight from main and go straight to altitude limit. We can see every single vehicle leaving their main base. If we can spot all of the lodges and both helicopters, we can see the location of five early game radios, and depending on the map and the distance, possibly even see those radios from across the map because they still render in. And then we can fly closer to find hab locations. And this, with the right team that can actually utilize this information and can send people to ticket farm, could be devastating for the enemy team. I mean, even if you don't take it to that extent, just encircling the defense objective and seeing every vehicle and every hab that comes in is also very powerful. Although slightly more challenging because then you are deep into the terrain and it's actually loading underneath you. Finding a right balance at that 1500 meter mark is really crucial and something that with some practice could be incredibly good. I look forward to getting some better games with this kind of concept.